where purpose manifests. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The Most High has called you to be fellowshipping with me on a channel that has poetry, digital art, and kingdom topics. Plus rap. In the name of Yeshua, I pray you are increased with positive vibes. Coffee, but I usually do uh, darker 
roast, but even with this lighter roast, it's, it's, it's richly um, tasteful as well. Hallelujah, so love it. All right, you should try it. Hallelujah. All right, so let's move on. All right, so putting the most high first throughout the test of life with godly works and godly conversation. So we know that we are preparing ourselves for the second cleansing of the earth. So like in the prior segment, we know that uh, King David he decided to put the heavenly focus first. All right. So throughout the rest of his life, he did not repeat those sins. He decided he was going to put the heavenly focus first. And we know that he did make the cut. So we will see him in the kingdom to come. Hallelujah. Yes, after the sword of consequences came through King David's house, he definitely had to smell the Heavenly Father's cologne up close and personal. He was smelling maybe Visage Blue or maybe Coach for Men or it could have been Paco Rabanne. And the Heavenly Father, when he gets up close and personal with you, definitely he's not going to forget deodorant that day. <sighs> <laughs> Anyhow, King he forgave King David. Right. And uh Heavenly Father is very loving and forgiving, but he also uh wants you to learn from your mistakes. So putting him first is what we're gonna go over some examples. So this segment we're going over the drug epidemic and a testimony example that I have um dealing with prison ministry. Okay. So, or I would say to me, this prison ministry aid, limb aid, uh, or help aid uh, prisoners. All right, it's somewhat of a prison ministry that you're doing as a believer. So, uh, and, and if it was a bite to eat, if it was uh, alms deeds uh, to help someone with a place to stay all right so that's prison ministry um, when you're dealing with uh ex-prisoners okay so ex felons um so we're going to go over the drug epidemic so we know that the drug epidemic this epidemic has went well the first drug epidemic was in the 60s and 70s it was a heroin epidemic Okay, then in the 80s and 90s, it was a crack epidemic, a uh, drug epidemic. And then going into the millennial, now we are dealing with the opioid epidemic crisis. So in this segment, I'm going to go over the mind of a drug dealer and put out some examples of uh, the importance of family children um as well all right so we will be coming out of second corinthians 6 14 verse 14 it states be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion have light with darkness so, in the last segment, we went over how um, two married couples actually messed up. The sword did not just go through King David's house, but it also went through Bathsheba's house as well. Okay, so she was not exempt from this sword that went through. Okay, so she experienced the loss of a child because of the sin that she participated in with King David. All right, so the woman was not left without consequence as well as King David. All right, because King Solomon, again, was the second child. So, um, yes, she was not left without consequence. That sword hit her too of consequences. Um, but I, in the scripture, you do not read of Bathsheba even 
committing that sin of, of adultery ever again in her life either. She was, had became, actually she became a widow when her husband Uriah was killed on the front line and King David was able to uh, continue his relations with Bathsheba in marriage because at that point she had became a widow. So her husband was actually, but she never um, did anything like that. As far as I know, biblically, it doesn't seem anywhere that she committed such a sin ever again in her life either. So I'm sure as a woman, she had to learn her consequences as well. So that was with the married couple. Now we're going to go over pre-marriage and the mind of a drug dealer. So again, in my own local prison ministry experience, I had the opportunity to ask two ex-felons that had got arrested and went to prison for uh, drug dealing questions as far as well a question as far as what was the reason why they chose to live the lifestyle that they chose to live all right so with the first um ex-felon uh drug dealer uh or ex-drug dealer i asked him the question why did he choose the lifestyle that he chose and the question or the answer that he gave was he was making legal money but it wasn't enough so that was one reason why he decided to try to make uh, fast money because he said it wasn't enough and that was the only concept that he can come up with uh, to gain extra money uh, so that was one reason uh, for choosing that lifestyle. And then the second prisoner I talked to, ex-prisoner, ex-felon, and I talked to and asked the same question through my local prison ministry <laughs> help. Okay, he said the reason why he chose the lifestyle was back a long time ago in the 80s okay he came into uh, drug dealing and he did it because first of all he was getting accolades from his woman so in other words because he was making all of this money illegally she was happy and she was giving him accolades for making the money so she never um, had any type of opposition to what he was doing so it just kind of fueled the fire to keep him going towards it too and also uh, drug dealing actually became an addiction for him uh, getting that fast money and uh, he also said while he was doing all of this he was wondering why um, people was so into getting this product and then he started getting high on his own supply. And that's a downfall, a consequence that happened to him from choosing this lifestyle. He ended up in drug addiction also. So ladies, do not add fuel to the fire. We're gonna go over that. Future planning with your significant other and possible children. So this is for young adults. And also, uh, as a mid adults, all right, this is prior to the marriage that we're going over and dealing with this topic of the drug epidemic. Okay, so young people's fast life living is a very uh, attractive lifestyle, but it also comes with consequences. All right, so some consequences can be death. Um, from fast life living. Um, some consequences can be imprisonment, like what happened to um, the ex-prisoners that uh, I spoke with. Um, and by the way, um, they had children as well. And I'm sure um, 
their children was affected. Yeah, when their children was affected, they were affected, and they didn't get to see their kids grow up uh, in certain areas that would be healthy, such as seeing your kid um, graduate from high school or uh, being a part of their life just in their normal development. All right, so yes, yeah, so the second ex prisoner that I asked the question to. Again, he said, you know, by his woman giving him accolades and, you know, people been happy that he had this money, it added fuel to the fire, okay? So, but when he got caught up, then he felt like, oh, maybe, you know, somebody should have, you know, maybe not done that. I had fuel to the fire for me because it ended up being a spiral. And it affected his life to the point where, again, like missing out on their children's development um, that's very important for a child to have. Hallelujah. Um, so, ladies, you do have what, the power of influence <laughs> on your mate. Okay. <laughs> so, you have to think about these different things as sort of consequences. Okay. Because, of course, when you do choose a mate, um, you want him to be a part of your life and your children's life, and you want to grow in a happy, healthy environment. Hallelujah. So future planning with the significant other and possible children is very important. So in, in this type of a scenario of the drug epidemic or fast life living, these are the things that you would have to think about, you know, your well-being, your kids' well-being, hallelujah, and uh, you have illegal drugs and you have legal drugs as far as dealing with godly works, because again, we're going over godly works and we're going over godly conversation because we're being prepared for the second cleansing of the earth, hallelujah, so we're being prepared for an eternal kingdom, hallelujah, peace and rest. So just on that foundation, the use of talents or godly works. All right, for this particular topic, the drug epidemic and drug dealing. All right, you have illegal drugs selling and you have legal drugs selling. So uh, there's always a way that you can use your gift because actually these two ex felons had gifting. They just used it in the wrong way because drug dealing, again, like I said, you can sell drugs actually legally. So if they would have thought to maybe further their gifting in another area of legal drug selling, uh, like the becoming a pharmacist or pharmacy technician, or now there's a, a variety of different ways that you can get into uh, legal drug selling uh, with legal drugs, and you can make just as amount, of, uh, well, just uh, more of the amount of money that you would have made during the other one. Because I believe the pharmaceutical industry is a $3.6 trillion dollar industry. So now you definitely, in this millennial, all right, because we're in the opioid crisis now in the millennial, but um, in this millennial epidemic, there's a lot of different ways that you can make money legally and save yourself the hardship and the trouble of going to prison. Because let me tell you something, when you go to prison, um, you lose your right to travel outside of the country for 10 years, okay? Once you get out, you can't travel outside of the country for 10 years. And another thing that happens when a person goes to prison and you get out, you have your uh, firearm for those who like to carry firearms legally. When your firearm privilege is provoked, so 
And there's no telling if you will even get the privilege to have that back. Because certain states, they will not issue uh, a firearm to ex felons, to ex felons. So these are some things that happen, and you have loss of time, uh, stress that comes along with going to prison, and uh, all the dangers that comes along with the fast life living. So um, just on the flip side, all right, if you decided to, well, there was, like I said, there's a gifting there and marketing and sales. It was just used the wrong way, right? So um, people who get into that lifestyle, it's just that they're using a gifting the wrong way is something else that they could be selling or a different company. Maybe they could, you start your own entrepreneurship and you start um, with selling things that are can be sold legally. All right. Um, when you branch into your gifting or marketing and sales, that's what pretty much it is selling, selling things. So maybe I would say it's a gifting there. It's an entrepreneurship gifting. It's just being used in a way that's detrimental. So, hallelujah. But we, on this channel, uh, we are moving forward and, uh, to preparing ourselves for the second cleansing of the earth in which you have to utilize godly works and godly conversation. Hallelujah. The family fire is going to preserve whom he will when the fire falls those are the people that he will uh, preserve so the use of your talents in the right perspective can go a long way all right and then if you have multiple gifts you know it doesn't take much for you to start a business it's uh, you can start a business so easy you know it take you about 30 30 dollars to start just a sole proprietorship. All right, you can get your EIN number, that's free. Uh, you can get your trade name or trademark locally. See if your funds is low and you can't do it nationally, you can get a trademark locally. That only costs about maybe 15 to 20 bucks. Um, and then you get your city and state paperwork for taxes, get your business registered with the city and state, then you have a business for about 20, 30 bucks. Okay, so it's just, uh, like I said, in another segment, my people perish from the lack of knowledge. Right now, we're in the information stage as well, so you can evolve in your gifting in many ways, and you can make just as much money um, a legal way, all right? Than a non-legal way. Now, another thing with getting a felony, if you do get a felony, then that we're going to prohibit you from operating in a legal way uh, with drugs. Because once you get a felony, it can prohibit you from getting the licensing that you need for that. So, but it's still hope beyond the tunnel. All right. So, um, it's it's definitely harder. Um, operating in the gifting of entrepreneurship and sales uh, after you get a felony, but not it could be easy depending on what you choose to sell. It, would, it wouldn't be drugs though once you get the felony, but prior to if you don't have a felony, you can start a business or, or get a job an illegal drug selling and make just as much money and then but if you do or for those who have gotten a film you would just have to utilize that gifting in another area of sales all right um with your own company entrepreneurship and right now it's a lot of opportunity out here for you to do this thing so hallelujah even when you pick up a trade, all right? So if you pick up a trade, say if like dealing with 
people who are ex-husbands that have gotten a felony. If you pick up a trade, electrician work, um, you can start your own electrician company or masonry. Say if you didn't want to do the masonry work yourself, but you had a trade in that, you can start your own business and train other people to do the masonry work and as an owner of the business, you know, so there's always an outlet out, okay? It's just a matter of honing in on your gifting. We're talking about godly works and godly conversation. And um, the ladies <laughs> edging you on for this to do the godly works and the godly conversation about me and planning for your healthy future. Hallelujah. So we're going to go over 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Uh, it says, There have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But Elohim is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but with the temptation also make a way to, to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. So the Heavenly Father will always make a way of escape. Hallelujah for you. He will always make a way of escape. All right. But we want to do, we're talking about pre-marriage. You want to make the way of escape prior to, say, if it's, it's a fast life living, drug dealing um, situation going on. You want to change your mind to hone in on your gifts, to move in another direction before marriage with your significant uh, young adult lady who loves you very much and wants to build a healthy family. A healthy family with you is <laughs> always a way of escape. All right. So it's just honing in on that escape. Let's move to the next segment. All right. We are to my reaction video segment. Hallelujah. This is going to be a lot of fun. All right. So we're on the topic of drug epidemic all right so uh, like i said the drug epidemic went through different stages so now we're going to take a trip back in the past to the 80s the crack epidemic and then we're going to paradigm shift into the millennium all right uh, on the same topic we're going to paradigm shift with artistry so I want this is for fair use and educational purposes, and this coincides great with spiritual maturity, the topic that we're on, spiritual maturity part three. Hallelujah. So we're gonna take a trip in the past with this great song, self-destruction, on uh, what was happening in the past and the take from young adults then on uh, the drug epidemic and violence. Uh, that was occurring during that time frame and uh, this is one of the greatest classics that was ever made by a variety of rap artists uh, that uh, spoke a message of change hallelujah for the better for healthy living healthy lifestyle hallelujah so let's get it
Shalom and thank y'all sure I'm here. Until next time, have a great evening.